Hello, and welcome back. In our previous video, we have discussed about AI BI dashboards. Today, we are going to discuss about AI BI Genie. Now, consider a situation you want to interact with your data in natural language. When I say natural language, it means using text prompts. Genie space allows us to interact with our data using natural languages, and this is completely AI powered. In Databricks, we can go ahead and create Genie spaces, provide business users access to those Genie spaces, and then your business users can go ahead and interact with your data in natural language. They can go ahead and type their query, and the AI would respond back with the results. And that is the best part of Genie spaces. Today, we are going to create one such Genie space, and we are going to provide the business user that we have created in our previous video access to that Genie space so that it can interact with that genie space using natural language. Before we start with this video, if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist first. So without any further delay, let's begin. I am back in my Databricks workspace. Now, before we can go ahead and create a genie space from scratch, let me show you one thing. So in our previous video, we created one dashboard, right? So if I go to dashboards, if I open the dashboard that we created, which is sales dashboard. Now, you can even enable genie space on this particular dashboard. So, users can see the dashboard and even they can go ahead and use that genie space with this dashboard to query data sets using their natural language. So, in order to enable genie space on a particular dashboard, you can just go ahead and click on edit draft. And then before publishing, you just click on this publish button. And now you can enable Genie right on this dashboard using this particular toggle. Once you enable this toggle, the Genie would be available on this particular dashboard. Again, any natural language query that you run on this Genie space would go through the same warehouse that you have configured with this particular dashboard. Now, in order to create a Genie space from scratch, you can click on the new button on the left hand side and you can select Genie space. Even under the SQL tab, you can go ahead and click on this Genie. Once you click on this Genie, you are landing on a page of Genie. Now, in order to create a new Genie space, you can just go ahead and click on New. Okay. Now, once you do this, first thing that we need to do is attach data sets to this Genie space. Now, before we attach data sets to this Genie space, it is important to note that the AI assistant would use the metadata of your data sets in order to allow you query the data sets using natural language. Okay, now it even uses some sampling data, but you can turn that off. And we are going to see that. Now, I'm going to select the same data sets that we have been using, which is orders raw and customer raw. And once I select those data set, I'll click on create. Great, our genie space is ready. On the right hand side, you see a lot of options. Now, new chat is an option that you can go ahead and click in order to create a new chat window where you can pass your natural language queries. History is to show whatever prompts that you have put in order to query your data. Configure options allows you to configure your data sets and we are going to do that. Monitoring is to see all of the queries that has been run using this genie space. The sharing tab can be used in order to share this genie space with different business users who can also go ahead and query the data sets using text prompts. Now, the first thing that we will do is we'll configure our data sets. Now, we are already in the configure tab. In the settings, you see two options. The first option is to provide the name of the genie space. So I'll just change it to sales genie space. Okay. And the next thing is to attach a warehouse on which this queries would run. Okay. So we have already attached this to our default warehouse, which is warehouse. Now, one thing to note is genie spaces only works with SQL warehouse pro and SQL warehouse serverless. You cannot use classic mode for genie spaces. Okay. So this is all good. I'll click on save. Now, I'll go back to context. Now, this is where you will configure your data, instructions, and SQL queries that you want. Okay, so first we'll configure our data set. So we already see we have attached two data sets to this genie space. Okay, so as soon as I run a text query, these two data sets will be used to query your data. Now, one important point to note AI Assistant uses the metadata of your data. It means it uses the description of your data set, column comments that you have put. Okay. Now we have already attached comments to our data set in our previous video when we were working with AIBI dashboard. So let me just go back to Catalog Explorer quickly and I'll go to one of the data sets, which is orders raw. Now, if I go to the overview of this particular data set, you can see we have already attached comments to all of the columns. Okay. Now, this allows the AI assistant to understand your columns better. And this would allow it to generate queries in the background when you run text prompts. 
okay now you can even refine this descriptions in the genie space okay so let me quickly go back to genie space and if i click on orders raw you see a lot of option here now it already gives you the description that it fetches from unity catalog now, if you want to change it you can go ahead and click on this pencil button and you can change the description that you want for this particular genie space now remember the description that you change here would not affect the comment that you have added in unity catalog this is only for this genie space okay so let's do one of this so i'll just scroll down and i'll search for order status now if you remember from our data set we have three order status fulfilled open and pending now our genie space might not be aware of what is o what is f and what is p so i'll just modify this i'll say order status are as follows okay and i'll say p for pending f for full filled okay and o for open okay so this would allow the ai assistant to understand if we have queried for open order status it should go ahead and see the status with o in that particular column okay so let me quickly save this this is done similarly if you want to change any other column description you can go ahead and do this now one more point to note here is sometimes the data from your data set is being fetched for sampling and sampling allows better query results okay but if you want to turn that off just click on this pencil button again go to advanced and then you can just turn off example values and click on save as soon as you do that none of your data goes to ai assistant for sampling okay you can turn this off for all of the columns that you need if you want the example values to go to ai assistant for better results you can always enable that but if you don't want you can turn that off same thing you can go ahead and do for customer raw so i've already done this you can see we have already provided the descriptions at the unity catalog and those are already being fetched the genie space so we don't have to do much here okay let me quickly go back and we are good with our data sets now if you want to add any more data set you can just go ahead and click on this add button and you can go ahead and add a new asset here okay let me just click on cross and now the next thing is to provide instructions now consider you want to provide some specific instructions for this genie space you can go ahead and do that for example let me just give it a specific instruction for example i'll say mk stands for customer market segment okay okay so what it would do is if i use this shortcut say mk so genie space would understand that i'm talking about customer market segment similarly if you have some explicit instruction that you want to provide to this genie space you can go ahead and provide all of those general instructions here so let me just click on save here okay now this is done now the third tab is sql queries if you want to provide some sql queries to make genie learn better you can go ahead and add those example queries here and genie would learn from those queries and make your results better okay so this is something that you can go ahead and set in the context of configure okay so now you know how you have to configure genie spaces okay so let me quickly go back to data and we have two of the data sets that we are going to query okay so let's go ahead and write our first text prompt in order to see the data great now what i'll do is i'll close this on the right hand side now i'll write my first question so i'll write how many open orders and i'll hit enter so what it has done is it has went ahead and understood that we have to fetch the value from orders raw table and it has to see the order status which is o now if you remember we have explicitly instructed that if i type open it means it has to search for the order status o okay and this is where the descriptions and the metadata are so important okay now it has already provided me a value which is for my open order count okay now if you are not sure and you want to see the query that it has launched in the background you can go ahead and click on show code as soon as you do that you will see the sql query that it has fired on the warehouse to get the result and if you understand it correctly it has just done a count here based on order status which is o which looks good to me so this is all good for me so the result that it has provided is correct let's go ahead and see one more for example i'll write how many full filled order okay and i'll hit enter as soon as i do that it will query the data set and provide me the result awesome now if you see it has fetched the order status which is f which is actually correct and if i go and see the code order status is f and it has done a count 
so it looks good to me now let's write a complex query for example let's see what is the average order size so i'll just type what is average order size and i'll hit enter okay so it is going to query my data set based on the metadata it is going to find a result awesome it gives me an average order size of 151125 okay so let's see what it has done in the background so i'll click on so code and it has used an average function in order to find out what is the average size now let's make it complex let's run some text prompt where it has to join two of the data sets which is orders and customer so i'll just write average order size based on mk now if you remember i have provided an instruction which says mk means customer market segment okay so i'll just click on run so let's wait for it great now if you see it has brought customer market segment column average order size if you want to see the code you can just go ahead and click on it and you can see it is grouping by customer market segment which is correct so it is taking our instructions as well the instruction that we provided is mk stands for customer market segment so it works for us okay now i'll just hide this code if you see here it has already provided a visualization as well now if you want to edit this visualization just click on this pencil button and just like we did in our dashboards you can edit the visualization that it has provided okay now i'll not edit anything i'll just click on cross okay now let's make the query a little more complex for example we will ask it to provide year on year growth based on customer market segment okay now if you remember year and year growth is a complex query so let me just hit enter and wait for it to calculate awesome it has provided me a result if you see it is calculating year on year growth on different market segments like building machinery okay if i scroll down you can go ahead and see a visualization report so now if i go ahead and click on show code you can see such a big query that has been written in the background you can go ahead and verify this query if it is perfectly correct or not okay and this is what makes genie spaces so useful now your business user doesn't have to wait for reports to be created they can go ahead and query the data set using natural language prompts and in the background it automatically generates the query fires the query provides the result okay so i'm not going to check this but if you want you can go ahead and check this so i'll just hide the code here now one more point to note if you think this query that genie has written for year and year growth is correct you can go ahead and select yes okay so this would provide a feedback to the ai assistant and this would make it learn better okay now let me just go back to the monitoring tab here and you can see all of the text prompts that has been fired in this genie space okay you can go ahead and see users as well who has fired this so now you can use this monitoring tab to understand what all queries are being done using natural language on your data set okay now that you understand that our genie space is ready let's go ahead and provide access to this genie space to business users and in order to do that just go to share here and you have to add the business user for example i'll just search for business user group okay and i'll make sure they can only run we cannot manage this and i'll click on add great now this business user group has access to this genie space so let's quickly log in into our business user account i am in firefox logged in using business user so you can see this user is the business user now if i go to genie here you can see the sales genie space is now available for this business user to use okay let's go ahead and fire one query so i'll just open this space now as soon as i open this genie space you see an error here okay and this says that the particular data sets that you have used in your genie space and the warehouse that is being used in order to run this genie space this particular business user does not have access to it and this is where the governance matter so we have to provide this particular business user or the business user group to use those data sets and the warehouse now if you remember in our previous video in aibi dashboards we embedded our credential for the business user to use and this is why the business user was not facing any issue okay but in genie spaces you have to properly provide privileges so let me quickly go back to my workspace and now what i'll do is i'll quickly go to orders row and customers row and provide business user access okay so i'll go to catalog and i have already opened orders row i'll go to permission and i'll click on grant i'll just type business user group okay and i'll make sure it has select privilege and also use catalog and use schema and i'll confirm 
okay this is done let me quickly scroll to customer raw again same thing i'll go to permission i'll click on grant i'll just type business user group and i'll make sure it has select privilege and also use catalog and use scheme and i'll click on confirm okay this is done we have provided access to the data sets let's provide access to the warehouse to use so i'll quickly go to compute i'll go to sql warehouse this is the warehouse so i'll click on this i'll click on permissions here and i'll add business user group and it can use it okay so i'll just say can use and i'll just add okay now the business user has proper access quickly go back to firefox and i'll refresh this page awesome as soon as i refresh you can see that error is now gone so this business user now have proper privileges to use this genie space let's run our first text prompt from the business user account so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to query say total pending orders sale amount okay and i'll hit enter so let it run the query first awesome now you can see it has provided us with the total pending orders which is for order status p and the sale amount for those okay even we can go ahead and see the order status distribution now that is the same report that we have created in our previous video so let's do that i'll just type order status history and i'll hit enter okay let's wait for it awesome now it shows us the order status distribution plus it also provides us this same pie chart that it has generated in our previous session okay so now you understand how genie spaces are useful your business users are going to love it because they don't have to wait for your business analysts to generate reports rather they can go ahead and query the data sets using natural language they don't even have to worry about sql codes okay now if you want to monitor something you can just go ahead and click on monitoring tab and you can see all of the queries that has been run okay so this was all for today i hope you have learned a lot about aibi dashboards and aibi genie see you again in our next video till then keep learning keep growing and keep sharing